What's up guys? We are back here in Shadow Quest RPG taking some more look at this game. It is pretty cool. We're opening up the story mode here so we go from section to section. So chapter 1 we defeated, chapter 2 we defeated. We're now in chapter 3 and over time you'll be able to refarm those areas. So if you are stuck, the first boss in chapter 2 was insanely difficult. The game will slowly, it doesn't know I don't know exactly when the reset is, but every few hours, those earlier chapters will reset, and you can farm them over and over again to make your heroes stronger. And we are clicking through the tiles here, looking for the boss monster to finish. You don't have to physically fight the basic grunt monsters in the beginning here. It did X out these squares right here, so now we cannot progress any further, and each square cost us one of our stamina. The stamina is going to regenerate... Uh, one every 90 seconds, so it comes back pretty quickly, but there's some interesting game mechanics in here that prevent you from really doing a long play session. You've got a lot of debuffs that will debuff you guys, so like traps in the dungeons, that will debuff your heroes for about 15 minutes at a time. That's definitely no joke too, and, and they're not easy minor little debuffs, they're like 50% strength reduction, 50% intelligent deduction, uh, things like that, you know, 35% miss rates, increase, crazy things like that so here overall this is four squad uh typical turn-based rpg here the enemies up there have a turn ticker down count down their their attacks there so you can see the rat in the back has got one turn so as soon as we do something the rat is actually going to attack us we get one turn and then it ticks down one so each position has their own different kind of move the back position has these special superpowers and then all the others, the front, the left, the right, are all the same. If you click on the unit, you'll be able to see the attack right there. So he's going to do a wild swing. He will hit a target, and then he's also going to decrease its block, evade, and critical hit chance by 100% for two turns, which is a decent power. Um, when we start to figure things out here, you can swap your heroes at any time on your turn, so we can freely swap them around. If you're on the left, you can only attack targets that are kind of on the left side of the battlefield up the front there. If you're on the right, you can only hit targets that are generally on the right side of the battlefield there. A little bit of lag spikes there, it's alright. So now we have our archer in the back, and archer power here for being in the back row. Twin shot damages a select enemy and a random target from the back row. So we're going to hit someone. Let's go ahead and attack the rat. And he shot his second arrow to the rat in the background to clean out two enemies at once. He now has a cooldown going down, so we can't use our archer again for two more turns. We can swap another hero to the back there and to move the archer around wherever we want. The person up in the front position is actually going to be your kind of tanky guy. He's going to take more damage. Most of the attacks are going to go there. Some attacks will hit multiple targets or everyone on the field. And then some attacks will only hit targets that are on the right side of the field or the left side of the field. At this point, we have a couple of mages over here. And you do want to make sure that you know about their passive abilities. So let's start up and hit with our warrior right there. And show you some passive abilities. So right there, he hit us and he regenerated 2.1 points of life. That was definitely going to be one of his passive abilities. If you click on the enemy you'll be able to see what they have, what their skills are. And I apologize for the lag spikes there. So his basic attack is damages a front row enemy and heals the attacker. So that's what he did there. He attacked the front row enemies. And you can see our three heroes are lit up down there. So these are considered front row heroes. And then he's going to heal the attacker. If you click on the bat over here, we're able to see he strikes a hero and blocks his strike usage for two turns. So the bat can prevent opponents from attacking our hero over here. You won't be able to find out her power, her passive ability in, in the fights here. But we know that she actually will attack, throw a dot on an enemy, and then she's going to heal everyone up. She's an amazing unit. So this chick over here, don't know her name. We'll find her name after this battle. She's an amazing unit, the wolf spirit attacker. We're going to go ahead and throw our archer. And he missed. Finish up with the grunts here. And it's going to be good to use our mage there so we can get our healing. That dot is going to finish off the bat before he attacks. 
So our units are all completely healed there. Each unit has a different amount of HP, different amount of stats. You're going to pick up these crystals. These crystals are sort of like the premium currency in the game. So now that we've beaten that boss, or the, that monster, not the boss, we can now progress further up into the dungeon. We can go this way, or we can go this way. We still can't go on these other two X ones, because that other skull fight right there is uh, kind of blocking our way. Let's take a look at the name of this chick. So hero info, Mira the Shaman. If you look over here in the middle, it says perks. So he heals all heroes on each ability use. And there are your abilities right there. She is probably the best unit in the beginning of the game here that we found. We got this unit for free, uh, just progressing through the story mode. I think she was like the second one. I've asked the developers if it's all randomly generated, like what you're going to get, or if you're going to get kind of the same heroes. Uh, we'll find out more, and I'll get that information on to you. But definitely, this the Mira the Shaman is so powerful. This perk will keep your squad alive, because just the basic healer isn't that good. The basic healer can only heal one person every like three turns uh, and in that point your heroes are going to slowly die over time you also got equipment as you can see there let's jump into the next one we're going to keep going forward looking for the boss and we found the boss you can see the big giant skulls on the boss right there so now we can go and fight the boss or we can uncover some of the other tiles that are still around during that prep time we can actually um you know heal our heroes like put some potions on equip different heroes. We can also swap these guys out. So if we don't want to use these heroes, we can swap out different heroes and use them in battle. So it's always good to collect a lot of different heroes and they all have different abilities. Go ahead and throw the dot there and you can see huge amounts of healing on everyone. You do want to focus on their main stats. So the mage users are intelligent based for the most part. So you want to buff up their intelligence to make their damage stronger. The archer is based on uh, dexterity, I want to say. And then the warrior up front here is based on strength. And so we can't attack right now unless we swap her over to the right. If we swap her over to the right, she's now going to throw out her magic uh, dot there. And it's going to kill the enemy, the boss, and also slowly give us a health boost. Heal us up. So we're pretty much full HP again. And we've conquered this dungeon. We've got all these rewards right here. Gave some experience. And here's the thing where you're going to mainly use your energy up. Uh, energy comes very quickly. Again, one every 90 seconds. But if we explore the entire dungeon, we're going to get this, this silver treasure chest key. This silver treasure chest key is going to get you a lot of bonus items. It's a great thing to get. But we have to uncover all of these tiles. So we have to uncover one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more tiles. And in order to do that, we have to fight that next battle. We can go ahead and just leave this, finish this dungeon. It's down in the bottom left right there. We can uh, go to camp, and we can swap out our heroes. You can see we have a list of heroes right here. So we can train up different heroes. We have inventory. We can equip our heroes, drink potions, check out our miscellaneous items, materials that we found. So let's go ahead and uncover the rest of this dungeon. And we just got a trap right there. And you can see minus 50% int for 15 minutes on our archer. So thankfully, the archer does not really use intelligence. At least to my understanding right now, they, he has intelligence stat. But And then we also uncovered a treasure chest. If that was on one of our mages, that would have been a really big damage reduction for our mage. And now you can see our energy is running out. And also our squad will eventually get weaker and weaker as we keep progressing through. Because these debuffs are going to last for that last for that full 15 minutes there. Let's go ahead and just do an auto fight here since it's going to be pretty simple. We're almost done here. Once we finish the complete dungeon, all the heroes are going to get full health and everything's going to be okay there. But the debuffs are still going to stay on. So we're going to be 50% uh, less intelligent as our archer for the next 15 minutes now. And these are the things that I'm talking about is these time barriers that really, once you start taking a couple dungeons and you get these traps on you, you can't really progress forward. You have to take a 15 minute break, uh, you know, to get your heroes healthy again. It's a really bizarre feature, I guess you want to say. Um, and there's a lot of them. You can see there's another trap right there. So that one strength dexterity and intelligence are it looks like 25 percent weaker for 15 minutes there so our 
our heroes are now a lot weaker. We may not be able to beat the boss now that we just unlocked because we have two heroes that are actually suffering for some curses from those dungeons. We can go in and use an item, but we haven't gotten that many of these potions. These guys right here, six of these, removes all trap effects from a hero. So we have two heroes that are suffering from trap effects right now. We could use this potion, and that would knock us down to only four of those potions less, and we can progress further. But again, every dungeon apparently has about two or so traps in there. And if they stack up on certain heroes, that kind of really negates those heroes. Part of the reason you have a lot of different heroes to swap out and in is because of that that debuffing feature right there. So don't get like um, in love married to one hero because you may have to actually you know swap out heroes and use a different hero to uh, complete the missions here. So we're going to jump into this next the boss stage here. And we've already got two tiles unlocked it looks like. And it's a little bit bigger section, a little bit bigger dungeon. And you'll notice that the debuffs are still on the heroes down here in the top right of their icon. They do not go away, guys. So if we keep getting more debuffs on those heroes, this could be really, really bad. We may have to use a potion to get rid of those or just wait that 15 minutes. When you level up, you gain a lot of rewards as well. So it doesn't show us what we gain, but we go ahead and click on that. And we're going to gain some reward there. Boom, we got... Great potion of healing. Progressing through the dungeon now. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and fight the monsters before we uh, uncover more of these traps. So I think we can take care of these guys pretty simple. Click on the auto fights. The archer unable to, to take down the enemies in one shot. We've got some dots going on. we got our healer going throw in some magic. Every three turns, she's able to heal us, the entire party, for a little bit over four each now. So that's a massive amount of healing. With her in the party, with this setup we have, you built her up with intelligence, she does a lot more damage, and then she also gets to heal a lot more. So this squad is very, very strong, mainly because you have that, that shaman that's always healing you. The auto battle doesn't necessarily understand that the shaman is the best unit in the game, so they're not using the shaman to attack. And there she goes, brings everyone almost up to full HP. Keep progressing and hopefully we don't get those traps. Hopefully we'll find a treasure chest. Nope, we found a monster. So let's go battle the monster, finish him off. These guys are pretty easy. These kind of zombies sacrifice themselves some, for some weird effects. So we're still sort of in the beginning area where uh, they're giving us tips and tutorial like things. The tutorial ends very abruptly and throws you into this game with very little um, guidance per se on how to build your team that you can swap out freely almost always and that almost everyone's best attack comes from the back row. So generally when you're attacking, we'll do this next battle, this next boss battle manually here. Oh, we get another trap. Our archers now Oh, 25% weaker on everything it looks like for 15 minutes. So Archer is really, really suffering. Once again, we can go ahead and swap him out. So let's click on the camp. We'll click on the Archer. And we will go ahead and replace him uh, with this mage right here. Just because the Archer is really, really debuffed right now. Let's make sure we'll go to inventory that that mage has some uh, gear on. So she's completely naked right now. A very sexy lady right there, nakedness. So we're gonna throw some gear on her and build her up just real quick. Get a book, get a necklace. And when you swap the person out, the weapons and armor de-equip. So all that stuff right there you can see mainly is the archer things. Pretty sure that's de from my archer. Now we've geared her up. 
we've got the boss battle here. Let's take a look at a manual fight and how to utilize the back row for massive amounts of skill damage because they're just generally a lot stronger. So be quick, this creature will take less damage with each turn. We have to kill him quickly, they're saying. So damage all enemies, increase all resistance for 15% for three turns. So let's go ahead and use that right there. So we buffed our heroes up. If we put him in the back, the warrior is actually going to give everyone a 25% debuff for the enemies. So that's not necessarily beating him quick. Another debuff for the mage there. And in the back here, she's actually a healer. So none of these units are that great for uh, showing off the back row potential. Mainly the archer has that massive double shot in the back row. We can't attack there, so let's go ahead and swap her over to the left. Throw the dot there on her. Slash right there with the knight. Swap him over. Throw some more dotage on him. Swap those over. Oh, he's got a reflect on, so we just took 2.6 damage. It's also interesting to note that the damage is not full numbers, they do points. So the ultimate here is available. This is the first time you guys are going to get to see the ultimate if you haven't checked it out. So her ultimate here releases a wave of healing energy that replicates itself for the next four turns. So massive amounts of healing. We're full health right now, so we don't need to use that, but let's go ahead and just throw it on there. Huge amount of healing there. Throw some more dots. And so he just did something to us. We don't know what that skull thing is. Oh, it, he blinked out our thing. So there's an, an X in our attack damage. We can't use those attacks for this turn. Maybe next turn we'll be able to use it. No, we still can't. All right, so our attacks just came back. Let's go and attack with the knight there. Let's swap her over to the left. Throw that dot on there. Swap her over to the left so we can get the dot again. And yeah, we've got him down here. It's just too much healing. So once again, we'll have a reward here for uncovering all the tiles. We've got the completion reward. Picked up a purple axe, purple design to craft some armor, and 30 gems. So if we complete it all, we're going to get a gold key here. So let's stay. We have one more tile to open up, and there is another trap. So again, 15 minute debuff on that guy. Couldn't read what it was, but yeah, nasty debuffs. So again, our stamina now is down to 450. We kind of have to actually just take a break and can't play anymore. Uh, otherwise, we need to use our gems to buy stamina. Because each dungeon is around 12 tiles. So this is the time we're going to have to be like, okay, we're debuffed like crazy. We've got our stamina gone. Um, time to take a break. So you wait 15 minutes, come back. And you'll have a decent amount of stamina. We'll come back in an hour and you'll be like almost full stamina. And uh, yeah, that's a, a nutshell here of the combat of this game. There's also crafting blacksmith here. We just got this purple epic armor. You can go ahead and craft it. It's going to cost these crafting materials, which you'll find in game. And then also 40 of the gems, which again, you can earn in game. So we started off this video with a little bit over 600 of the premium currency. And now we have 687. So let's go ahead and craft one of these 
purple epic armors. My little blacksmith dude crafting it. And we got this crazy mantle of dexterity here. Plus 13, plus 8 vit. 10% block chance, 5% evade. So having four bonuses is crazy good. Uh, probably has those four bonuses because it's purple. So there's rarity. You can see we got green, we got blue. And then you can go ahead and equip that. And then there's also special dungeons, which are kind of like challenging modes. Dungeons are a lot stronger because these guys are level 15 to 18. We're currently only level 12, I want to say. And there's also multiple floors in the dungeon. So you're going to need to have like a full energy amount or come back in multiple play sessions to uncover all of the dungeons. There we go. We'll bring you more Shadow Quest RPG coming soon. The game releases tomorrow on iOS, August 24th. So pick it out. It's a free-to-play game. Check it out. See what you think. Post down in the comments. It's already out on Android devices. So if you have an Android device, you can pick it up on your, your Google Play Store, I want to say it is, uh, right now. So Shadow Quest RPG. Check it out, guys. Free-to-play. Can't go wrong with uh, trying out a brand-new free-to-play game. You're also giving out free gems, too, every three hours. So the gem generator will give you free premium currency so you don't really have to buy premium currency and you spend the premium currency on recruiting like epic heroes so these epic heroes over here we'll do that in the next episode we'll grab a epic hero that costs 600 and uh start building him up the good thing is he comes at the max level that you're currently at so we're at level 12 right now he's gonna come at level 12 as well he or she and I don't know, maybe there's rankings, so maybe there's this is the tier 2 epic heroes, and there's tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, I don't know you guys, we're still uh, early, early on in this game, it's pretty cool, it's worth a download, worth a shot if you like old school RPG games, uh, specifically JRPG games, I'll talk to you later, thanks for watching guys.